Hi, I am Gina Perks, and I am here to introduce you to a new tool that I developed for both long arm quilters and domestic quilters. Today, I am going to show you how to use it with a long arm machine. This is a straight edge tool for ruler work, and I call her Audrey. She's part of the Control Freak collection, so this is number two in my ruler collection. There will be more to come, so be watching for more rulers to be added to the collection. What is so special about her is that she has finger placement guides. So in all of the years that I've been teaching ruler work, I have found that the most common mistakes are rulers that tend to slip when people are guiding their machine along the edge. And the reason for that is that they do not support the ruler both where they're beginning their quilting and where they plan to end their quilting stitch. So what happens is they may be supporting their ruler up here and then as their machine is guiding forward, it pushes the ruler and causes it to slip. So with Audrey, we've got these finger placement guides that will allow you to see exactly where your fingers need to be placed so that you can have a wide stance on that ruler. So I've given, given you two finger placement guides at the top and one at the bottom. So you're going to want to hold the ruler like this. For your vertical lines, you're going to want to place your thumb in this lower hole. And then if you have a large hand, you can go ahead and place your middle finger at this far hole at the top here. You're going to want to anchor the ruler with your ring finger here and make sure that you have plenty of support on the ruler. The finger placement guides are positioned on the middle, in the middle of the ruler, so that the ruler doesn't tip. So that's another common mistake, is that people will support the ruler too far over on the edge, and when the ruler tips like this, that will allow your needle to hit the edge of the ruler. And if you've ever done that, you know that that's a mistake that you don't want to repeat. So with this ruler, you will have great stability and positioning right on top, right where it needs to be, right in the middle there. So you can see that I've created some crosshairs here. And you want to kind of start with that so that you can keep your angle consistent. Now I did include some registration lines on the ruler. So I have this straight edge, straight line here, and then I've also got some straight lines along the long side and then also the angles. So you can use those as references. So these registration lines are really important because you can see that it's they're going to allow me to keep that 90 degree angle consistent. And I can go ahead and line up the mark the lines that are on the ruler with those lines that I've marked with a temporary marking implement. So I'm ready to start stitching and I'm going to show you a really fun design that is an uneven grid that will allow you to stitch both well, not both, but in all directions from back to front, from left to right, from front to back, and from right to left. So it's very important that you, right off the get-go, you practice stitching multi-directionally so that you don't become just familiar with one direction. So I've got my fingers positioned just right to where I have a nice wide stance on the ruler. That's going to allow me to have more quilting time without having to slide the ruler. So I've got a nice wide hand stance and a nice anchor here with my ring finger. And when I guide the machine, it's with a very easy, gentle grip. And I'm just simply allowing the edge of the ruler to be my guide. So my hopping foot is resting upon the edge of the ruler. Now I can rotate. And let's say I want to stitch from right to left now. So I'm going to line up the lines on my ruler with my, re my registration marks. But since I want a little bit more quilting room, I'm going to simply slide that ruler and just sort of eyeball that for parallel. That is something that is very easy for your eye to determine is the, a parallel line. Now I'm going to stop. I'm working my way through this design rotating the ruler for horizontal lines and vertical lines. When I rotate my ruler so that I'm in a horizontal position here, I'm going to change my hand stance. So in these, for these situations, I'm going to place my pointer finger in this first hole, 
and then my pinky finger is going to be placed in the closer hole. My thumb is what's going to anchor the edge of the ruler so that it doesn't slip. That's going to stabilize that ruler. So this is the stance that I want, and you can see that these two fingers are also supporting the ruler from the top. Now it shouldn't be a real heavy hand. You should be able to rotate and manipulate the ruler across the fabric, so it shouldn't be a heavy, heavy touch. It should be very comfortable and easy to move and manipulate. Now once I reach the end of my stabilization, so my finger is here, I don't have any more stability past that, so I don't want to continue quilting because since there is no stability or support beyond that point, the hopping foot might cause my ruler to slip and would make my line crooked. I don't want that. So I'm going to stop my quilting, rotate my ruler, and you can see there my stitching line and the line that is marked on my ruler. I can place that right there so that I can see that my angle is going to stay consistent. And then I'm ready to continue this design. And you can see that I'm stitching in all different directions. And as I get comfortable with the ruler, I can start moving through these designs relatively quickly. So that is my new baby. And I hope that you will try her out and let me know what you think. These are some of the designs that I used Audrey, my new ruler, to create. So you can see all of the fun things that you can do with ruler work. They're a lot of fun and there's some really, really great ideas. I hope that you will join me in my iQuilt episode that will be coming out next year where you can learn how to create some really cool designs that are grid-based.